Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here at the Small Cells World Summit 2014 in London's Docklands at the Excel Complex. This is about the business case for carrier Wi-Fi and carrier grade Wi-Fi is being used by telcos, especially alongside small cells, to create heterogeneous networks, HetNet. But why? What's the business case for carrier Wi-Fi? The thing about uh, carrier Wi-Fi, the thing about Wi-Fi in general, is it's a proven technology. Everyone understands it, um, handsets um, use it in its native form, and um, it has a, a vast range of, um, of applications, both in the business and the consumer side, which are very powerful indeed. You know, that, that's the first thing. The second thing is that in terms of cost per bit for a, for a, a mobile operator, um, it is very powerful indeed. There's a huge swathe of capacity there, on demand, which can be seamlessly integrated um, with the mobile network. That's what, that's, it, carrier Wi-Fi is a bridge between um, vast expanses of capacity in the places where it's needed, with motivated venue owners, and on the other side, um, a mobile network operator that needs to engage better with its customers, that needs to provide uh, more capacity at a lower price. It, carrier Wi-Fi is the bridge that puts those two things together. What's the business case for carrier Wi-Fi? Lots of people say there isn't one. <laughs> well, I think there is. Um, and the, the reason for this actually is, is related to another trend in the industry, which is about licensed, unlicensed convergence. Uh, and the key, I think people have been talking for many years about Wi-Fi convergence. How do we converge Wi-Fi um, that we all know and love and use every day um, with licensed radio? And, and um, that's been a, a bit of a challenge, but there's a new, there's a new player on the block, as it were, um, which is so-called unlicensed LTE. Um, and that really changes the game, I think, in terms of um, that convergence play. And I think the, the way in which operators access that unlicensed spectrum um, using Wi-Fi, uh, using LTE or Wi-Fi, um, is now the important question. Uh, and the business case for that is much clearer. So I think there is a question, right, as we roll out small cell networks, of what is the role of carrier Wi-Fi? Do we have small cells that integrate Wi-Fi? Are they separate products? I think how carriers are using it now, though, separate from how they're deploying their small cell networks, number of ways, right? Some of them are leveraging it just to keep their customers happy, right? You become a customer of mine, you get access to my Wi-Fi network, great. Some are trying to figure out how do we leverage this internationally, right? So how do we leverage this when you're abroad? Is this a way to, we don't quite have LTE roaming, we know roaming charges are, are not where they want to be, at least for the end user. So how do I make this a cheaper roaming? I think what's really interesting is carrier Wi-Fi is being leveraged by a number of carriers sort of in a, as a land grab. Think about some of these major venues, right? Stadiums, malls, airports. Who can get there first? Who can use Wi-Fi as, as a way to get in there and then control that venue so that when other folks, other operators want to be a part of that, they have to go through that gatekeeper. So I think you're really seeing the operators look at this as, as not just offload, but the multitude of ways that they can look at that. And that doesn't even include the way operators are looking at it in terms of serving up ads, serving up specific applications. So it's really a whole, a whole menu of ways to use it. Carrier-grade Wi-Fi can also be used to create new revenue channels and to leverage the mobile roaming experience. One thing that's really interesting to me is um, everything you can do over the top, right? So, you know, Wi-Fi at the end of the day is just a connectivity medium, right? And once you make it very easy to connect and make sure you've got a really, really nice, robust connection, then suddenly it opens the door for things like video and for other over-the-top services and messaging and the, sort of the visual web and, um, you know, one example might be extending a home broadband and cable subscription and being able to access all of that premium content when you're on the go, as an example. Um, there are also you know, models around mobile marketing and um, location-based services that are as yet untapped. And then we also are seeing that it's opening new opportunities for fixed providers that were not previously open to them. So you're starting to see fixed providers investing very heavily in Wi-Fi because it gives them a mobility component that can be extended even into things like voice, uh, voice services as well, leveraging really Wi-Fi as the predominant connectivity mechanism. It's interesting, we've been speaking to a few 
sort of Wi-Fi carriers here over the last couple of days, and there does seem to be a move towards the, the venue owner, almost as the, the focal point of, of Wi-Fi installation. So whether it's a supermarket or a coffee shop, what, could, what can we deliver to that venue owner to, to allow them to get value out of the service? How can carrier Wi-Fi be used to leverage the mobile roaming experience? Well, right now, mobile roaming for data, it's so incredibly expensive. And so what happens, and you hear this all in airports all the time, is that you switch your phone off, did you disable data? Uh, that's not really a good business model, isn't it? It's not, uh, so people are scared, uh, basically, of the, of the data roaming. So the result, I think it's a huge opportunity when you travel, you want to be able to have the same data services. And Wi-Fi is a good way to provide that. The technology behind carrier Wi-Fi is being continually developed and improved to match the evolving needs of operators. Uh, certainly if you look at where we were three years ago to where we are now, um, things are, uh, have changed incredibly. Um, the, 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 the carrier Wi-Fi uh, aspiration to, to, to provide a good service is one aspect of, of what's being delivered, but you know, services and protocols such as, as Passpoint and NGH when they come on board will actually allow devices um, and, and the person who owns that device to start picking the always best connected. It's, that will start to become a reality between that. Um, there will be policies on those devices and of course with the, with the rise of carrier Wi-Fi you also then start to look at the security of those, that Wi-Fi as well. So you know, service providers who, 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 who are now being looked at uh, by end users to deliver them that service those expectations of where they are and the capacity they want to deliver will, will start to become realistic. And, and I, I definitely see over the next two to four to six years that this will work first, uh, you know, become more slicker uh, as, the, as the technology starts to be adopted more widely across the globe. And finally, how's the technology for carrier Wi-Fi being developed and improved? Well, firstly and foremostly, the, the access points have to be of certain quality, um, so really good quality, rather than something that you would be able to use at home, which is fine for home use, you can't use in a hotspot. You can't use a carrier-grade Wi-Fi access point that can only do a half, half a dozen users or a dozen users concurrently. We need an access point that can do 500 concurrent users without breaking a sweat, which is what we are using. Then you have to worry about how to maintain the quality of experience, and most importantly, tell the device what kind of experience would be available from said access point. In any given place, the, uh, there are plenty of ways that the device can connect to a wireless network. You have at least one, two, three Wi-Fi networks, a couple of different radios on the cellular side, and depending on what the device wants to do, it can choose the best way of getting it done. Let's say it has a voice call, the requirements are low latency and uh, low packet loss, but if it wants to do a video stream, for example, latency doesn't matter, and it can tolerate packet loss as well. It just wants a lot of bandwidth. So, courses for courses. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.